DIY project number 10, we have this little 4HP Eurorack module here. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. We've got an in jack, an out jack, and a LED. Nothing too crazy there. I've currently got a cable plugged into each jack. We're gonna mess around with it. So <clears throat> if I take this over and I'll plug it into just to start this random voltage generator, we see we start getting light. Um, or I can plug it into pretty much any voltage source and we get light. Doesn't really matter what it is. Okay, this is a completely passive module and it's based on the super warp generator from Rasmussenth. Uh, I'd seen this module years ago and I did not understand what it was. I remember it was passive and I did not understand how it worked. Now as I've gotten more into building some simple circuits, um, I suddenly became uh, what you, obsessed with figuring out how this circuit worked. So it shouldn't make sense because you have behind the panel here, you have a capacitor and a resistor and an LED. And that shouldn't work. That should not create sound because a capacitor stores charge, a resistor increases the resistance of a circuit, and an LED allows current to flow, in one, or a diode, which is, this is an LED, but a diode allows current to flow in one direction. By the way, I'm not an electrical engineer, I have no electrical background, I'm just a DIY guy, so I'm just gonna apologize in advance if I say any of these terms incorrectly, it's kind of how it's working in my mind. So I did not understand how this worked. Now, I tried to actually put one of these together to figure it out, and of course it didn't work, but I was using a standard LED. What I realized is the Rasmussenth, they used a, um, a th uh, three color LED. So, a three color LED with two pins. That is the secret of this circuit. So, a three color LED actually is three diodes inside this little thing. There's three diodes and a tiny IC. So what the IC does is allows it to cycle between the three since there's only one input and output pin. So an IC that's cycling is technically an oscillator. It's oscillating between three different diodes, allowing that current to flow out in one direction, but not back the other way. Oh, wow, we have basically an extremely simple oscillator. So what happens is when you plug in any voltage into this thing, it starts oscillating. So I'm going to take the output here and plug it into our uh, output module, which is plugged into our tiny tweed here, and we should hear sound. Oh, you hear right now. There you go. So you hear it's just kind of creating sounds, random sounds, and that's exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, you hear it kind of gets those percussive sounds. Hopefully those are coming through on the camera, and then it kind of gets more like, here, we'll give it a little volume. It gets more like kind of squealing noises. Now let's try, if we plug it into something like an LFO, we're going to get a very um, repetitive pattern because an LFO is just repeating. Likewise, I can plug it into an audio rate oscillator and again, we get something very predictable. But if we use something like a looping envelope or this one, we get something that's a little more interesting because we have different rise and fall times causing the IC to oscillate a little differently. Now, that's pretty cool. Um, it's definitely cool in a light show, but uh, I thought after I made this, I was like, okay, that's neat, but what happens if you plug this into a filter to kind of get rid of those kind of clicks and pops that are happening as, as the, as the um, LED is cycling? Now, by the way, you could probably also, you could probably um, mess around with the values. I, I don't know if I'm using the same values that Rasmussenth used um, I just kind of messed around with what I had. I'll bet if you change the capacitor and um, resistance values, but particularly the capacitor value and probably tried some different LEDs, you could probably get some smoother sounds. But again, this is just me messing around. So I'll plug this into there and we'll take the, let's see, let's take the bandpass out into our output module. Oh, suddenly we have something interesting. Now let's try a few different input sources here. That one's very similar, of course, because it's just a looping envelope. That happens when we use the random now.
a lot more interesting once we have the filter there to smooth that out. We could even try a sequencer here. Very cool. Or an audio rate source. Now, it's interesting to note here, I'm gonna go back to the looping envelope. A lot of this character is coming from a filter. So what would happen if we tried a different filter? We're probably gonna get a different uh, type of effect. Let's see. Definitely. That one's a lot more plucky. Whereas this one's maybe, here, let's try the low paths. So as you can see, this thing does some pretty crazy stuff um, once you run it through a filter. Now if we really get crazy, we can probably take this thing into the delay here. Let's try that. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. And let's go back to the function here, the make noise. And let's feed it Malifo. Now we're getting something crazy. So there we have DIY project number 10. And also as part of DIY project number 10, we kind of inevitably made DIY project number 11, which is this, a jack. Oh wow, you're thinking, gee, that's neat. Well, this is kind of a story behind this. I found these jacks a while ago, these actual um, jack plugs here. Uh, and I thought they were kind of cool because they looked like a quarter inch, you know, a five U, but they were only eighth inch. And so I picked up a couple of them thinking I'll use those for something someday. Then I was at a synth meet earlier this year and this guy had this little um, gadget he would plug in and it had just an LED and it would tell it would respond to a positive or negative voltage and I thought that was super cool because you know when you're rearranging your rack or something you could use that to test modules and just make sure that they're working then my DIY brain kicked in I was like okay this isn't that tough you have a jack you have an LED you probably need some sort of resistor in there to um, you know control the the brightness of the LED and you can make one of these this isn't tough so I made one, actually two, and you can see what happens when you plug it in here. It responds to, there's a looping envelope, you can see what happens. Now if I plug this into like up here where we have a negative, then you see it negative or positive. Well you can see the other one I made here that's plugged into the LFO, and we can plug it into the square wave to be a little more dramatic here. You can see what's happening there. So it's just a little detector, that's it. That's all it's doing, so if I slow this down, we'll see. Or it's just detecting the rate. So when you rearrange your rack, you can use this, and of course it's gonna work with anything that outputs a voltage, even a clock signal, even a sequence. Again, that's kind of turned down here. Let's try this one. There we go. So you can kind of see the brightness based on how that sequence is running. Kind of a neat little thing, so I threw that in there as well.